Okay, so what is going on with Garcia and Cavadai? That's uh, what we're going to talk about. We're going to talk about today, uh, along with a little bit of other little bits and pieces going on around the club. So this is the latest two that seem to be close, from what I understand, from what uh, is being reported in the media, from what is being reported uh, from sources within the club that uh, Rangers are moving ever closer to making some more signings in this window. Again, young up-and-coming talents, yet again, players that fit this transfer model perfectly. You know, I think there's been some great points made on the videos by you guys out there talking, obviously, about the fact, well, you know, experience has got us to what? You know, three trophies in 12 years. Not exactly brilliant, is it? And uh, the fact that, you know, I think in the last 12 years, it has been a pretty dire state of affairs for Rangers. Um, I think, you know, we've kind of not accepted mediocrity, but fallen in, fall into it a little bit and kind of been accepting of certain players who can maintain that mediocrity. And I think this is the right move to bring in young, hungry players to supplement uh, players that will be staying, obviously, and then obviously further experienced players, which I have no doubt down the line we will sign uh, once the European Championships have come to an end. So the next two that seem to be close are Yusuf Kabadai, the winger, the young Bayern Munich, Munich prospect, and of course, Damian Garcia, the young Uruguayan destroyer, the central defensive midfielder. Got to say, love that one the most. And we'll talk about Garcia shortly. Uh, exciting news and exciting things about Garcia. Uh, Yusef Kabadai, who spent last season on loan at Schalke 04 in Bundesliga 2, uh, was very highly thought of by Schalke. And in fact, Schalke did want to uh, take him on a permanent basis, but couldn't afford the package uh, that would be required to keep him. So he returned to his parent club and it now looks pretty much certain that the fee has been agreed between Bayern Munich and Rangers um, over the transfer of Yusuf Kabadai. Uh, Kabadai, I heard now, was very highly thought of within the Bayern Munich Academy, a uh, player that they did rate very strongly. But, you know, they've got, they are very much operating a trading model as well. They are operating a model where they need to make money on players to maintain salaries, to maintain uh, their very high end top level uh, team that they team that they've uh, obviously established that uh, didn't do so great last season but they will be looking to obviously return to the top next season uh, what do we know about Yusef Kabadai was some basic facts about him uh, Yusef Karhan Kabadai is his name he is 20 years old so again like I said a player that very much fits this trading model a player who I think you know there is a strong hope that within the club that he will be a player that can be flipped for a large amount of cash in the future um, he is born in Munich in Germany even though he is of Turkish descent he is over six foot tall he has German and Turkish citizenship although he has represented Germany at youth level He's an attacking left winger who can also play on the right wing as well. He is essentially right-footed, likes to cut in off the left onto his right foot, but can also play on the right and go outside players and whip those crosses into the box, something that Rangers do seem to like to do under Philippe Clement. Uh, currently, like I said, he is with FC Schalke 04, uh, completing his loan with them. His loan with Schalke expires on the 30th of June, at which point he will then return to FC Bayern Munich 2 or whatever... Uh, Ein Zwei, is it Zwei? I think oh, Ein Zwei, die. Uh, Zwei, I think is two in German. Um, he is uh, under contract there till 2025. So he's only got a year left on his deal, which may obviously explain the one and a half million pound transfer. Um, no doubt there is sell-on clauses and other things inserted into that deal. Uh, Kabadei is certainly an exciting prospect, like I said. Physical, strong, quick, good going forward. Certainly, you know, fits that mould of the player that Philippe Clement is very excited about bringing into the club this summer. He looks to be, you know, if you look at the players we've brought in so far, they're all, you know, quick, strong, direct, attacking players, you know, uh, players that will take the game to the opposition. And people have talked, you know, about Clement's tactics and the way that Clement pl currently plays. But I think, you know, Clement has been extremely uh, restricted in what he can do in, in how he can play by the players he currently has in the squad or had last year. And obviously injuries as well, which severely restricted him towards the end of the season. And you can only kind of, you know, a good coach can only sort of use what he's got and coach what he's got to a certain level. You know, he can't turn them past into the team and play the way he wants to play without the players that he needs to fit his model. And I think that this is very much where we are looking at these players now. Strong, quick, direct. Hefte, strong, quick, direct. Cortez, strong, quick and direct. Skillful attacking. Uh, and Ciara is not, not attacking, but he is very strong. He is very quick. He reads the game well. He's aggressive. 
He's physically strong. Again, Cabadai seems to fit this. Garcia seems to fit this. It does seem to be very much that type of player. Um, so, you know, this is where we seem to be heading uh, with these players. Um, in terms of his stats, that's the wrong stats. That's Garcia's. Here is Cabadai's. Uh, 23 appearances last season for Schalke. Four goals, a goal every 287 minutes, 1,000 minutes of football in the German second division, you know, which is to a reasonable standard with teams like Hamburg, for example, as well in that league. One game in the German Cup and two games in the Regionalia Vest, which I'm not quite sure what that is. I think it's probably some of the youth league or reserve league in Germany. Uh, they clearly have a better setup in Scotland. Uh, probably got a better FA than Scotland, that's why. And probably got a chief executive that actually knows his arse from his elbow, unlike Neil Doncaster, obviously, who doesn't know his arse from his elbow. Uh, 26 appearances in total and five goals. Uh, decent from the wing for a young player who is making his way in the game. So certainly, you know, high aspirations for this young man. And, you know, like I said... Um, you know, like I've said a number of times, you know, I think this is the way forward to bring in these young players. And Bayern Munich, again, like AC Milan, don't tend to recruit duff players. They they tend to recruit high standard players. And certainly, you know, if Kabadai can be of a, a similar standard to Malik Tillman, then we certainly are getting a very talented player. So the next player that obviously is the big name that we've been linked for, this is the one I'm probably most excited about, the player that, you know, really does kind of, and I know he's a defensive player, but still excites me in terms of the type of player that he is. Yeah, he is a, a Uruguayan, he is a destroyer, he is a, a proper Uruguayan player, you know, and by a proper Uruguayan player, I mean someone who doesn't take any shit, someone who is has some fight about him, someone who has a bit of aggression in his game. And, you know, Uruguay as a nation and Uruguay football is a well-renowned for that aggressive physical style. I remember growing up, you know, watching football at like the 86 World Cup and, you know, Uruguay being well-renowned for kicking the crap out of their opponents. Um, you know, and I think Uruguay have kind of, even under Bielsa, kind of continued that. And Marcelo Bielsa is a coach who has a very proud tradition of playing very exciting, very aggressive attacking football. But still, I think he hasn't taken that aggression out of the Uruguayan style. Uh, obviously, you know, I know that Garcia plays for Pedrol, but he's obviously played for Uruguay and the Uruguayan uh, under 20s as well as part of that World Cup winning Uruguay under 20 team as well. So, you know, very talented player, uh, someone who is very highly regarded in his home country as a, an up and coming talent, someone who they believe will excel for the national team and will be part of their World Cup squad in 2026. Um, so, you know, a very exciting signing. I think the sort of player we need, I think, you know, what another apart from the lack of pace and the lack of aggression and the lack of directness this team had last season and the lack of a clinical finisher, um, so much lacking last season, wasn't there, really? Um, we did lack an aggression, a physicality, an ability to take the game into the opposition's faces. And I think Garcia would be someone who, you know, if we can get this deal over the line and the reports that I'm hearing are very much that Rangers... I'm going to try and push this through this week, get this done by transfer deadline day to announce it on, you know, not deadline day, by transfer opening day to get this announced once the window opens on the 14th. Now, Garcia, I think, will be someone who can really, you know, unsettle Celtics midfield, who can really, you know, get physical with Hatate, get physical with O'Reilly and McGregor. O'Reilly, obviously, I think, unlikely to be here, though, next season with Celtic. He's obviously likely to go to a to a bigger, better, um, you know, uh, you know, more level-headed club with better fans who are not bigoted, you know. So I think you know O'Reilly is certainly someone who will be gone next season. So perhaps we won't have to deal with him. But Garcia, I think, is certainly someone who can mix it up with that Celtic midfield and and be that aggressive player that we need and we've missed. Um, you know, this this past season, I you know I've got really high hopes of this young lad. Um, you know, in terms of a little a few facts about him, uh, Sergio. Damian Garcia Grana, known as Damian Garcia. A bit bizarre, that isn't it? Uh, he's 20 years old again, event fits the model, under just under six foot from Col Can Canalones in Uruguay. He's a Uruguayan citizen. He is defensive midfielder, right footed, uh, under contract until the December 2024. So again, it has a a limited contract. So again, you know, the money that you're going to be paying for this lad is not going to be massively high because his contract runs out at the end of December uh, due to obviously South American seasons having a different course to run uh, against their European counterparts. But, uh, you know, 31st of December. Now, a lot of people have, have heard people go, oh God, not another Cifuentes. This guy is very not much not Cifuentes. This is a guy who is coming from a Uruguayan league. He was coming from Penarol, who are one of Uruguay's top teams. Penarol, who compete in the Copa de Libertadores, which is the Champions League of South America, uh, you know, a player that is established, a young attacking talent, a young to a defensive talent, someone who is very much 
coming from a, from a team in a league that from a team that is a, a renowned team in South America, not like Cifuentes, who came from a retirement league, which the MLS is. The MLS is a, is a huge retirement league. You know, most MLS teams are full of players who are look, just looking for their final paydays on the way out. You know, you've only got to look at Inter Miami with Busquets and Messi. You know, it's like a, a, a who's who of Barcelona ex players. Uh, so, you know, this this guy is coming from a proper team, plays in proper competitions, not like in the MLS, which is a bit of a joke. Um, you know, in terms of his records this season, one game in the Torne Inter Mediao, uh, six appearances in the Copa de Libertadores, which obviously, like I said, is their version of the Champions League, 12 appearances in the Uruguayan First Division, one goal, one assist, which, you know, remember this guy is a central defensive midfield player um you know 19 appearances over a thousand minutes of football this season so again someone who's sort of started to establish himself in the first team uh, and again someone who you know i think can be a fundamental part of our squad going forward and one thing i've talked about is uh, you know i'd love to see this partnership as that pivot to in front of our back four i mean garcia the destroyer you know will destroy but he can bring the ball out he can distribute the ball well he has that over Lundstrom, you know, one of the things that Lundstrom would do badly for us, I think, was to slow the game down, to drop too deep, to to try and bring the ball out from too deep. Whereas I think Garcia will not drop as deep and will obviously, I think, you know, win the ball slightly further up and therefore free Diamande further up the field to go and influence the play further up to be able to play those balls into our number 10, into our wingers and to be more of that attacking eight that Diamande actually is. And, you know, we know that Dio is a class act. I think Garcia will enable Dio to go and play um, that little bit better. So these are the two deals that I'm hearing are next closest to getting over the line. And certainly if we can get those over the line after June the 14th, you know, you're looking then at obviously having Jeff Tay, Cortez and Ciala, um, Garcia and Cabadai through the door already. Five signings, you know, five good young players who are, I think, going to make a big difference to this squad. And, you know, one thing that slightly frustrates me, and I know patience is a word. The window isn't open yet. There's a whole lot more to come. You know, there'll be players on their way out. We know that's going to happen. The window isn't even open. Relax, be calm, be patient, guys. It isn't done yet. But I don't understand the fans who are slagging off the signing of these young players. You know, I, I trust Niels Coppen far more than I trust some sofa scout, um, some, you know, uh, some director of recruitment who sits in front of his telly or his computer screen. Perhaps I'm guilty of that as well, but I don't know. But, you know... Niels Koppen is a, is a professional. He has an excellent track record at PSV Eindhoven for finding young talent, young talent that he brings in, and then that, that young talent goes on to be a good success, a great success. Bakayoko, uh, Lang, Sibari, uh, for example, at PSV Eindhoven, you know, top, top players that he scouted, brought in, uh, young players that have made a huge difference to PSV this season and helped them win the, win the Dutch era divisi. So, you know, we've got to trust him, and I far more trust Koppen, Maldini, who recommended Enciala, Clement, these guys who know football, who watch probably millions of hours of, of tape, who watch, go and watch thousands of hours of football in stadium, on training grounds, than, you know, fans who probably know very little about these players, who've never probably watched them. Um, you know, we've got to trust Coppen, we've got to trust Clement, we've got to trust the net, the scouting network we have in place now. We are using a new scouting approach. You know, there is more AI in there, computer generated statistics and, and computer evidence and and, and say, well, I think saber saber metrics, is it? I think that was the big thing. Those of you who've seen the film Mint Moneyball, um, you know, it, it's it's far more down to that these days as well, you know, than just purely down to one man. You know, I think there was a disaster last season when we left it to one man who, you know, I've watched these players since they were little. I've grown up watching these players. They're my mates, blah, blah, whatever, Michael Beal. You're talking shit again, as per usual, you dodgy cockney used car salesman. But, you know, look, that's, that's not the days anymore. We were wrong, I think, to obviously trust that guy. And you may say, well, well, well why, why trust this guy anymore? Well, these are guys that have got good track records in football. Michael Beale's only track record was as a, you know, as allegedly the brains behind Gerard, which I think we've now seen is false, and obviously a manager that's ultimately put together a very failed QPR team. You know, whereas Niels Coppen is a guy who put helped put together a fantastic PSV Eindhoven team that, you know, that has been in that sort of thing. Clement is a guy who put together championship winning teams at Genk at Bruges, for example. So, you know, these are guys with, with good, excellent track records. Michael Beale did not have that good track record, did not have that evidence behind him that Coppen, that Clement have. So I think, you know, we've got to put the trust in them. And 
like I said, I'm not going to draw judgment on this window until we get to the end of it, until we see the first few games of the season and see how this team are gelled together, put together, how this team look on the actual park. You know, I think you can't ultimately make the final judgment onto them until the actual first ball is kicked on the first day of the SPL season. And, or, you know, or even, you know, come October, November time, you know, if we're top of the league or if we're six points behind them, then you make your judgments then. But We've got to give trust to Coppen and Clement uh, going forward. Um, so, look, that's pretty much it, guys, in this video for this morning, this afternoon, this evening. You might be watching this and we might have already signed them. Hey, who? Who knows? Anyway, thank you for watching Glasgow Rangers Nation. Please, obviously, hit that sub. Help us to keep the channel growing and moving forward. And on the way out, as always, two things I ask of you. One, smash the like. It defeats that algorithm that lurks in the YouTube cave. And number two, please always remember, we are the people.